Hey, welcome. This is Coach Chris with the Strong by Design podcast. And today is the Ketogenic Diet Explained. And we have with us a holistic health practitioner and nutrition specialist by the name of Tanya Fines, who uh, is definitely knows a lot more about ketogenic diet than I do. So uh, even though I, I know loosely what this <laughs> thing is all about, I really I'm glad to have her here with me because I'm interested in, in finding a lot out. Welcome, Tanya. Thank you. Glad yeah. to be here. Yeah, great to have you. And uh, we'll be doing more of these with you uh, just because um, you're such a great resource for a lot of things on the nutrition mm -hmm. side. I mean, f you know, the fitness exercise side as well, but certainly your background and your history with nutrition and, and kind of general health topics is, mm -hmm. is great. So I'm excited to kind of dive into this. But for those listeners that maybe aren't familiar with you yet, right. um, please tell us a little history uh, about um, you know, what, what, what makes you such a, an expert? <laughs> well, I kind of shy away from the term expert, but thank I you. Know. I've always been in this industry, health, wellness, and fitness. I started out as a high school health sciences teacher. Awesome. Um, but it just, once I had my family, I started my own businesses and companies, yep. and I've always worked in the capacity of a coach, whether yeah. that was physical, like fitness, program design, or yeah. nutrition. But this is all I've ever done yeah. and learned a lot along the way and yeah. keep learning because it's a, it's a huge... It's a huge arena oh with so gosh. much and so much new coming up all the time yeah. that I just, yeah, can't get enough. You, so. Yeah, you even had your own natural food market. I did, For, yes. for a few years yes. there. How, what was that like, life like? So, I mean, you and you were the operator, right? Yeah, you were like was, the owner-operator. Yes, I was. It was largely, um, I did have some wonderful employees, but it was sort of a one-woman show definitely when it got started. And it was, it was awesome. I mean, yeah. it was um, the ability, like I got to go to trade shows and I met a lot of people, yeah. especially people at the, you know, kind of ground roots level, like yeah. growing organically and yeah. people that were also very excited and passionate about healthy eating and not just getting food in the stores and to your table, but getting the absolute best. And um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. You know, my kids got involved, so they worked for me. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it was a, a great it was family, a family thing. thing. It yeah. really was. Yes. And you had to have relationships with a lot of different people in the community yes. for like where you were getting your, your produce or and, and farm local farms, I would imagine. Very much. And, right? It was, yeah. it was, you know, we were living in a smaller, a smaller community. Yeah. So there, it was important to me to support local. You know, if you're asking people to buy local, let's yeah. try to provide as much local as we could so it was a um, very much a community feel beyond the community itself yeah. because I got to get out there and meet you know more farmers and producers yeah. and network That's so, so yeah awesome. it was nice so cool well so I told you she knows like food and 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 keto is is all about certain types of food and food sources so if, if someone asked you on the street, what is a ketogenic diet, what would your answer be? My simple answer would mm -hmm. be it's a diet that or where you eat higher amounts of fat, moderate amounts of protein, and much lower amounts of carbs. That's the simple answer without getting into a whole lot because I could go on and on and on. Yeah. But bottom line, that yeah. is what it means. And we'll get into obviously yeah. some of that for, <laughs> for you listeners out there who are saying, well, I, I still want to know like yes. specifics. We'll, we'll get there. But... The root word of ketogenic is obviously ketones, right? Mm -hmm. So what are they? What are ketones? Okay. I've heard them called the fourth macronutrient okay. in some in some right. instances, but what? okay. Well, to maybe make it simple for some of the listeners, when we most of us know or are aware that when we eat carbohydrates, we make our body makes glucose, and that becomes the fuel. It becomes the diesel that our body runs on for That's energy. Right. So if we start to consume higher amounts of fat our body will produce ketones. So they're like the things, for lack of a better word, they're the things that become that fuel source. So fats are digested and in the liver they're converted into ketones and ketones become that fuel source that our body then starts to run on and go to for energy. It's kind of like our body because it is so smart mm. and we don't have to, you know, our brain and our body does stuff for speak us. speak different that languages we don't have sometimes. To, yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah, that too. So for our, if we do, if we're like, unbeknownst to, to us, not eating a lot of carbohydrates in our diet. Some people might not naturally, right? right? Yes. Their body is saying, well, I need energy somewhere. Yes. So I'm going to get it from my from the fat. Right. And and that's essentially what you're saying is that it's your it's your body is is starting to um, 
utilize your your caloric intake differently. Exactly. And starting to find energy sources elsewhere. Exactly. Yeah. Your body tends to primarily go to those glucose stores as their number one because they're easy. They're mm-hmm. easy to get. And you know, by default, it's we tend to eat you know by default more carbs. It's easier to consume those carbs. But once you start to reduce carbs to a point where you're almost eliminating them, I mean, yeah. that's an extreme term, but right. it gives you an it's idea close. of how low we get. Yeah. What happens is your body still needs to function. Cells still need to repair and grow. You need to be able to think. You need to be able to do a job. You need to be able to mm. move. Mm. So your body needs to get energy from somewhere. And it's smarter than anything else on the planet. So yeah. it's going to go, well, what is there? And what it will do then is second in command will become the fats and those ketones that are being produced as a result of that. And that's where it's going to draw its its energy and yeah. fuel source from. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's good. Well, that's, that's I think, a very... Um, a gr- good explanation to understand like at least the basics mm-hmm. a little bit how it works and stuff so knowing what you've just said how safe is going ketogenic are there risks involved with it it is a safe diet okay. um, what I would say though is if you're someone who's thinking of doing it do some research ask some questions don't yeah. just jump into something you know you wouldn't go swimming and jump into an unknown body of water if you didn't at least know how to swim or have somebody with you that right. knew how to so right. you know it's like anything new find out as much as you can from rel- reliable reputable sources and there are lots out there um, Again, it's with anything. If you have any sort of physical issue, any pre-existing condition, anything chronic, anything that you've been dealing with like Crohn's or diabetes, like any sort of pre-existing consistent chronic condition, you should always check with your physician. But the ketogenic, if followed correctly, and if you don't go all renegade, um, you know, all of a sudden like, some people yeah. will start something and go, yeah. wow, this is fantastic. Yeah. And then they can go extreme. Yeah. So if you're, if you're smart, and if you're consistent and if you follow it properly, it's absolutely safe. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, because it's obviously we're doing this show today because of the popularity right. in, in recent years. I mean, yes. 10 years ago, I don't know if anyone was really talking about a ketogenic diet. I don't even it know. It certainly if it, didn't seem to have the popularity no, unless it was sort of medically really, prescribed, right. which is sort of its foundation is right. in medicine, right. really. Yeah, See, yeah, interesting. It, it, it's for, for people with certain maybe yeah. issues, complications, or whatever, they need to follow some type of strict, yeah, right, and or maybe even someone like a, a bodybuilder mm-hmm. who was maybe kind of following this intentionally, right. you know, to really cut their carb intake to to get most of their fuel sources from fat, which actually helps you burn fat better. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna we'll get into that. Um, so when actually we'll get into it right now, right, because. <laughs> Will a ketogenic diet really help with weight loss? Because it seems like that's why people yes. are trending that way. Exactly. You know, oh, you know, Atkins didn't work for me or Paleo didn't work for me or, you know, Weight Watchers or Nutrisystem. I'm going to go with this one. Right. So why why would this one be beneficial for weight loss? Well, um, it does work for mm. fat loss. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course, there is no one diet fits all. There's no one size fits all. And if you tend to jump from diet to diet to diet, none of them are going to work because your body is not going to have any idea what it's supposed to be doing or using. So that can become a whole other complicated issue where you're just constantly rebounding and always gaining more. With the ketogenic diet though, we're reducing carbs a lot, like to like 5% is sort of the broad brush Mm -hmm. um, parameter that we work with and 75% fat. Now that's a large percentage and and I'm not talking French fry fat or potato chips fat. We're talking the healthy fats, coconut, avocado, nuts, seeds, grains, whole grains. But what happens is in, in consuming higher amounts of fats and producing those ketones and your body essentially switching from a sugar burning machine to a fat burning machine, you're not only using that fat as a fuel source, you end up burning excess body fat that's sitting there yeah. as that fuel source your body's, as well. Your body's more, uh, um, the opposite of reluctant, more willing Absolutely. to use those st- stored fat as For energy. energy. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like whatever your body doesn't get, it doesn't want to give up. Mm-hmm. But anything that it's getting, it kind of... Let's go because lets, there's, yeah. it knows it's going to be getting a yes. uh, supply. Replenished, yeah. And it will be replenished, so it's much yeah. more... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like agreeable. Yeah. It works with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think people don't realize either, you know, 
we're going to get into like some of the foods that are included in ketogenic and obviously a, a great deal of them are higher fat content food items but you your brain is made of a lot of there's a lot of fat in our brain yes i mean why, why it looks the way it does and it's so heavy and stuff it's it's mm-hmm. it's it's a pretty big fatty organ it is you know and so to really restrict your fat intake in in for anybody out there who maybe doesn't even want to follow ketogenic they're right. just curious about it but having healthy fats in your in your diet is is so important and it's so more important, so much more important than having. Uh, like I'd be much more apt to cutting sugary items than right. cutting fatty items right. out of my diet. And again, we're not talking fried, deep fried stuff. We're right. talking. So let's go into some of these really good kind of like if someone was creating a list right. of ketogenic, um, you know, items okay. for for the grocery store. What, what would be on that list? Right. So healthy fats, um, things like coconut oil. Mm-hmm. Um, avocados are a great source of yes. fat. Nuts and seeds. And pretty much kind of any kind of nut. I pretty mean, much. I mean, walnuts are really, I mean, there's obviously, you can, we can create a hierarchy of what sure. are better, but like walnuts, almonds, but nuts, cashews, nuts in and of themselves yeah. have a higher fat content. Yeah. And they taste good and yeah. you can do a lot, lot with them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, your nuts and your seeds, whole, a lot of whole grains because they do have those oils that we need that mm-hmm. our brain needs to think clearly and logic um dairy like full full fat dairy so yeah. healthy healthy dairy greek yogurt cheeses mm-hmm. and the harder the better because yeah. the harder cheeses yeah. have that good fat in them yes. so yeah those would be you know those would be some of the some of the things on a food and, list and like uh fish fish absolutely fish your items. salmon your higher fat fish mm-hmm. that has the omega-3s that mm-hmm. we need that a lot of us don't really get mm-hmm. enough of so beef Beef, certain beef yeah, products. Yeah, me- yeah, meats are good. Good, you know, good cuts of meat. We're not talking yeah. processed, no, right? But no, right. you know, good cuts of, good cuts. of meat, um, and even you know, with within reason, without going crazy, bacon. I mean, bacon sure. is part of a ketogenic yeah. diet. You know, yeah. It's it's a meat. It's got fat. Yeah. Um, and who doesn't love bacon? <laughs> I know. I, it's it's rare. It's rare. You every once in a while I come across them. But yeah. I, there's a there's a guy that 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 we know um, here at at, uh, at Critical Bench, you know, uh, but. Uh, he his name is Mike Gillette, and he's um, he's just such a great guy. But he's always putting posts on his uh, his fan page uh, about ba- like bacon. He'll have like a, a it'll be like a, a picture of his of his plate for right. breakfast, and it's just like I don't know how many strips of bacon, yeah. six, seven, eight <laughs> strips, and I don't even know if there's an egg with it. It's just like kind of like bacon, or it's like right. bacon wrapped bacon, yes. or bacon wrapped around something else like around the you know and he's just it's another food group (laughs) yeah i mean he's just and it's fun and he's in great shape i mean he's he probably follows more like a kind of a ketogenic type diet i Mm -hmm. rarely see any carbohydrates in his uh his post but uh, anyway that came to mind because Mm -hmm. um because the world loves bacon what are you gonna do uh okay so we we know kind of what what you're eating more of yes um so that means what we're avoiding are kind of like a lot of the stuff that people are, most people are eating or the, the quick grab items. The fast, items. the yeah. fast, because yeah. we're all busy. Yeah. We're all busy. I really don't think a lot of people get up in the morning and say to themselves, well, how badly can I eat today? Or what, you know, how many poor choices can I make today? Right. A lot of it comes, but if we want to kind of work backwards, a lot of it comes down to just making time to prepare stuff. And that, right. that it doesn't matter what diet you follow or how you want to eat, just always taking a little bit of time, whether it's each day or a little bit larger chunk of time each week to prepare some food and have better options on hand, yeah. you're always going to have more success. It's going to be a lot more easy to follow and you're probably going to get those results you want and be able to maintain them. So getting uh, you know high amounts of carbs are easy to get because those are the foods that have almost a, an infinite shelf life. Yeah. They're readily available. You can grab them. You can eat them on the run, in the vehicle, at your desk. So it's not, you know, I don't believe people are doing that to be unhealthy. It's just what works because it's fast. It's there. It's easy. You don't have to worry. Is it rotten? Is it gone bad? Right. But if you want to get into something like a ketogenic diet, you know, this is a lifestyle diet, really. Yeah. Um, It takes a commitment. It takes a commitment to be involved in your food preparation, in your food, food like like meal prepping, Mm -hmm. right? My wife followed it very, very closely um, and got some really great results. Um, I think she probably had about a 10 pound weight loss over about a three month period or so, mm-hmm. following it strictly. Yeah. And now she still loosely follows it. Um, and, and it rubbed off on me even to, to some degree. 
And um, she was never, she was uh, really amazed by how not hungry she right. was because of the satisfying, right. uh, uh, the calories from the fat. Yes. And people don't realize how how satisfying that is. That's why, like, the nuts and the seeds and the nut butters and things like that, um, avocados, uh, things like that, they really do a great job of, of satiating the body. Right. And you're not, you don't get these cravings that you get when you eat carbohydrates. It's like a double-edged sword. It's like they're quick and they're fast and it tastes good. And But then, like, two hours later, you've already burned through. Yes. That and you spike and you you crash. Spike and you crash. You're hungry again, right? But not so much with fat intake. Slower digesting stuff, Mm -hmm. uh, and great, and pretty much you're tapping into your body's best energy source too. Fat is your your best fuel. It really is because it lasts. It's more sustainable over a longer period of time. You don't get the sugar spikes and crashes because of that. Like it regulates blood sugar levels at a much calmer, (laughs) more even uh, rate, rather than you know. Carbs. Yes. Carbs. Yes. And we're, again, we're talking about like high, like white sugar, high process. We're talking about the not so yeah. healthy carbs. Yeah. That, this you stuff know. that people know when they're eating it. This isn't good for me. But, but it tastes good. <laughs> it's quick. It's inexpensive. I need to uh, eat. Yeah. yeah. All that stuff. Uh, how easy is this plan? I mean, we, I guess we've touched on a little bit about mm-hmm. because there is some preparation. But it, is it easy to follow and stick to as a lifestyle choice? Well, that kind of depends on the person. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is, I don't like to say it's strict, but I mean, it, there definitely are parameters. If you want to be, follow a true ketogenic diet, you're going to be looking at 75% of your calories coming from fat, mm-hmm. 20% coming from protein, and 5% coming from carbs. Now, you might go over 1% or 2% in that, but it, that is basically what you want to stick to. Mm-hmm. If you have, you know, depending your age and a lot of things, if you've been eating a certain way for 30, 40 years, mm-hmm. Lots of carbs are kind of just flying by the seat of your pants and all of a sudden go, gee, you know, getting a little older. Things are settling here a little more. I don't have the same kind of energy. And you decide you want to do this. It could be quite challenging because now you actually, if you want it to work, whether it's because you want fat loss or you want to just improve your health or maybe it's been doctor recommended, you're just mentally going to have to adjust to being disciplined about sticking to it because it's a ketogenic diet because that is how it's designed that's how it's built and that's what you need to follow to get results so if you can do that no problem then it's not going to be a problem for you Um, there's probably going to be an adjustment phase Mm -hmm. Um, you may decide you just don't like it like it's not a diet for everybody but um, it's not that it's hard to follow it's just where's your discipline how committed are you is this just something you're trying for fun to see what it does or are you is is this a decision you've made are you going for a quick 5 10 pound weight loss right before Mazatlan (laughs) right right, right. just trying to sharpen up a little (laughs) bit before the beach you know yeah Uh, yeah but Really, I think, and what I noticed even with my wife, even though she's not following it strictly like she was, and she may go back to it now mm-hmm. that she knows what to expect and how that went uh, and the results that she got, but she developed some cool habits from it. Right. So she's still making, like, there was a, a breakfast that she was making. It was like an, like a, a quiche type thing with certain ingredients, obviously, right. that were all keto friendly. But she's still making that. And guess what? Now, all of a sudden, we if she makes that on a Sunday... And you have a big tray of it. You cut it up into some little squares. Yeah. And now everybody, her and myself, and if the kids wanted one, we all can like just have one little piece of that, yeah. heat it up, and now you got a very nice little helping of breakfast that's like you know low, super low carb, super tasty, yeah, and good for you. And boom, so there's a great habit. Right. Uh, I think I was telling you earlier, too, about the fact that she only wants this bulletproof right. type coffee <laughs> we now. Right, were talking about that. <laughs> that has, what's, it has like but, coconut oil, yeah. like heavy cream. And all some the fats. Other, all the fats, but yeah. it's absolutely delicious. Absolutely like if delicious. If you want the, the best tasting cup of coffee it really you ever is had, good. <laughs> use a good coffee, too, by, by the way. Yes. Make, it, make it with a good, don't buy the crappy, you know, cheap Maxwell House or something. Yeah. Sorry, Maxwell House, but come on. <laughs> I mean, really, Folgers. Yeah. Get a good coffee, mm-hmm. and so so it's kind of strong, and then make it like this bulletproof coffee. I mean, it's she's like, love it, it's loves very it. Good. And she drinks less coffee yes. because it's... It's filling. It's filling, and there, there's a bit more to it. It's like having a meal, a liquid, a liquid meal yes. kind of. Um, so if someone was getting started with ketogenic, what would be maybe like a quick like one two three like startup 
plan that you would give them? Right. Again, find um, whether it's a person or a site, but find a good, reputable source. Ask some questions. If you can, find there's lots of groups, like there's lots of Facebook groups. Yeah. And I'll, you know, you can find, and even through some of um, the hospitals in Tampa Bay, you, mm. can, you can access, like, you know, nutritionists or things like people that can, will happily email you back. Um, answers to your question. So find some good information, find some good resources. And there are free, they're called like the keto calculators online where you have to plug in. It's not just your height and weight. You need a measuring tape. You're going to have to take like neck measurements because they're trying to access from you as close as possible what you're possibly carrying as body fat at Uh, at the time because we we need to figure out your numbers. Sure, sure. We can't just throw like what's, you know, what does 75%, 20% protein, 5% carbs mean for you versus, versus you. me? That's right. Very, very different right. meal on the yep. plate. So right. get the information, get get those numbers. And it, you know, you may have to tweak it a little bit. You may have to play with them a little bit. Like I'm 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 way too hungry. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, are you still getting too many carbs that you're sugar spiking yeah. Yeah, or is yeah. it fat too low? Right. Um so it's really it's kind of that simple. Get those numbers and then just get started. Like Th- that's what create you have grocery, to do. Create a grocery, create a grocery list. list yep. Get those. You know, get some yep. like the um, the staples. Mm-hmm. You know, probably coconut oil yep. and yep. nuts and seeds. Some of those things we've talked about. Um, get a really good cookbook. There's some, say, great there's some great keto, keto cookbooks. Keto cookbooks. Fantastic. I mean, you have one good keto cookbook. You're you're done. It'll, exactly. I mean, and then you got all your meals. Exactly. Are in there for and you. a lot of them, yeah. because of the way this diet is set up, and because it's gaining so much popularity, a lot of the cookbooks, a really good one, will give you some like sample grocery list. It'll even outline meals yes. for the week. Yeah. So you can actually really set yourself up for success mm-hmm. if you're really committed to yeah. this. Yeah, I believe that. And it is always smart when you're. New to something, just one consultation with an expert for a good for good guidance Absolutely. for developing a goal and having a plan to get there. You can probably do that in an hour or so, sitting down with an expert, mm-hmm. and then boom, that's money well spent. If you're like looking to like change your life, exactly, you know, with this. So overall, what are the health benefits of, of going keto? The rep- well, the health benefits <clears throat> that we've seen are things like increased energy, yeah. dramatic uh, weight loss. And I always, I hate the word weight loss. I mean, I just, I'm very OCD about that. It should be fat loss because yeah. that's what we want to lose is excess Correct. body fat, right? Because that's the unhealthy yeah. weight yeah. we're carrying. So um, dramatic increase, uh, decreases in fat loss, um, stabilized blood sugar levels, mm-hmm. which is great. Yeah. A lot of people say they just, they feel much, once they get through that initial transition, mm-hmm. they feel more energy. They feel very clear. Like they're, they're, they're just, they're yes. switched there's on. A, there's they're a cl- switched there's on. There's a clarity there. Yeah. 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 I get that. I mean, I think most people under, can, can easily, they know how good they feel after they have maybe like a, let's say it's a healthy home cooked meal from right. mom. Yeah. Right. From mom. And mom was pretty good at like covering all the bases and having like a, vegetable and having all those things and and as long as you didn't overdo and you had a, a just a, a decent portion eating like that versus a, you know, a quick fast food grab right i mean really is there any comparison i, I think most of us are probably headed to the bathroom within an, an hour or <laughs> yeah. so after you eat not so not right. so good for you food but you, know, you get stuff that's like whole and and and, and good a, from you know good healthy food source right and you just you function better and you you, that's what your body wants it doesn't want artificial processed garbage and that's why another reason why i like keto is because it's kind of it's kind of what it's going after it's the reason why i like paleo too Mm -hmm. i like people who say i kind of more paleo in the way i eat it's like okay well that's good it Mm -hmm. means you're a more natural you know food source type person um it's a good way to be um any symptoms like so somebody goes keto right. and they're a week or two in is there like a maybe a symptom that they might they might get a, as a, as a result of this lifestyle mm-hmm. change they might now again that's going to be different person to person yeah. and the number one thing influencing that is like well what was your health like before, before yeah. you know it's like somebody that's never run ever in their life and decide mm-hmm. they want to start training for the boston marathon and they think they're going to go run 10 miles that mm-hmm. first night probably not going to get much further down than like a block and a half yeah. without <laughs> coughing and wheezing <laughs> so if you've had a more unhealthy diet or just really a poor relationship with food mm-hmm. Going keto, and again, if you're committed and you're going to start, you know, doing the prepping and following it, your body's going to have to go through a transition. It's not going to last long, but 
what is most common, the most commonly reported symptom um, is what's called the keto flu. And people just feel like they have a flu. They're just, they don't have that energy. They feel achy. They feel headachy. So it's not something you want to start maybe right before like your wedding, <laughs> a week or two before, or right, you know, right before a big job interview or something, gotcha. you know, so most people do experience some varying degree of this kind of flu, like just low energy, yeah. achy, headachy, uh, just no gumption. So pickle, if you're going to start it, you know, try two, three days before like a long weekend or if you have some holiday time coming that you know you're going to be laying around the house mm -hmm. and use that time to like give your body those four or five days to, adapt to just adapt. Bit. So it, it goes, oh, I'm not using sugar anymore. I'm using fat. So yeah. give it a chance to just adjust. Yeah. It doesn't take long. It needs long. to like reboot. It's yeah, like it it's needs a to reboot. Yeah. It's a reset. So it's not, this isn't like a two week, 10 day thing. It's a couple days. Most yeah. people get over it in a couple days if they just honor that. Get rest, drink lots of water, and mm -hmm. just breathe through it, yeah. you know? What is this uh, term ketosis breath? Oh, okay. what, 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 yeah. what, yeah, what is that? I, I, I'm unfamiliar. I completely do not. I don't even know if I'd, I'd heard of it, mm -hmm. but I, I saw it, and uh, right before we decided to do this, mm -hmm. and I was interested. What, okay. what is that? Well, ketones, when you, when you start building up ketones in your body, they can produce a smell that's similar to like, I don't want to say rotting fruit or older fruit, but when fruit <laughs> starts to ferment that alcohol yes, smell, yeah. so like alcohol-y, uh, like uh, acetone, you know what, like what nail polish sure. really kind of smells like? Yeah. So um, some, well, a, a lot of times uh, people will get that sort of uh, smell from their breath. So it's not, it's not like halitosis, it's not no, this horse right, that right, knock you over. Right, and right. it doesn't last forever. <laughs> it usually only lasts a couple days and then it's usually temporary. Yeah, yeah. But when you, when you first get into keto and you've been doing it, all of a sudden, your, again, your body's, it's, it's something new and it's got all these ketones. Yeah. And so some people will know, well, not even that they notice, but people yeah. around them will be like, what is, what is going that? On? You know, they yeah. should like gargle with nail polish yeah, remover like or something. The ketogenic <laughs> diet: lose weight, feel great, and knock yeah. people over yeah. with your breath. That's you know, right. it's like ooh, yeah. Boy, so I that love. that's what the ketosis. But it, but it's is. like it's kind of more of a temporary. Usually, it's thing. just a temporary yeah. thing. Yeah, okay. it doesn't last the whole time you're on the diet. Because again, your body just your body just gets in the groove, and yeah. this is how you function. Interesting, interesting. Well, I'm glad you've brought this to my attention. <laughs> so just in case I, I get a a. a, a you know, myself, I catch myself or someone right. else, but it sounds like this is, I mean, you're, you're definitely kind of strictly following the, the ketogenic right. diet at this point right. in order for that to kind of be the case. So mm -hmm. Maybe that's the, that's your cue to know that you're on, on, it's on the right definitely, path. It's definitely yeah. one of those, those markers that yeah. you are in ketosis. You, you are in yeah. ketosis. Yeah. yeah. And there's like strips and stuff. There's testing strips that you can get. Yeah. It, you probably pee on them, yeah. I would imagine. And it measures your it does. Level. Those those um, are a little more accurate at the beginning when you're starting mm -hmm. because most of us, if starting, you'd be going from like highly, you know, lots of glucose yes. to all of a sudden switching to ketones, and that yeah. would be easily marked in your in your urine. Yeah. But as you get into and you are more consistent in sustaining a ketogenic diet, the best marker is blood test. Blood test yeah. at that point, yeah. Uh, is it something that people can follow for a short period of time and then uh, come back to it here and there? Um, like like almost like cycling it with regular eating well what i'll say about that is this is not like a short term you know two weeks three months kind of diet because mm -hmm. what's going to happen is you're you're not if you are doing or wanting to follow a ketogenic diet for a specific result yeah you're probably not going to see them or not see them for very long or not be able to sustain them can you cycle it it's not so much cycling the diet as there are modified versions of a ketogenic diet. So if you really are committed to and you really want to do keto, but you just find, you know, I just need more than 5% carbs, there are modifications that allow for more. And I think one of them is called I might, uh, modified Atkins or Atkins modified. So it's still higher in fat, moderate protein, but a little bit, it allows for a little bit more carbs. Gotcha. So I do know a few people that... They don't really cycle, but they stick to that one because it's it's a little easier yes. for them, and they stay more ketogenic. It's a tweener. It's, it's a, a tweener. tweener, right? <laughs> but as far as true ketogenic, to hop on and off that, yeah, yeah. Um, we talk about things like the I mentioned the, the keto flu. So you think about it: if your body is going to transition into um, burning ketones for energy, and then you're going to switch it back to glucose, you're going to feel almost yeah. the similar symptoms going back and forth. Got so. You. 
Yeah, it I don't be, recommend yeah, it. Yeah. If you want to cycle it or you think you can cycle it, then I would say perhaps you need to look at a modified yes. version of the diet that allows yeah. for a few more carbs. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, I mean, again, no, you have to find what works for you. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's kind of goes back to a little bit what I said earlier, where sometimes just trying out something new to develop a one or two new habits yes. that are, are, are good habits, replacing old bad habits. I mean, right. that's kind of ultimately what people are after, I think, I think in so. life is that they're, the, the, the huge 180 degree shift is, is really hard for people. And for a lot of people, impossible. Um, but I think when we can just say, okay, that this one, wor- this one change works for me. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not doing this anymore. Exactly. And then you maybe just continue to pile build on, on and that. build on that. Yeah, that's what I feel like with it. Well, this has been really uh, eye-opening for me, and I've gotten a lot out of it because, um, you know, I, I, I knew the surface of, uh, of the ketogenic diet, but this really helped dive a bit deeper and, and, and help me for one. Um, so I hope everyone listening has really um, uh, benefited from this. And... Uh, you know, this is a, you know, this is something that you you want to be serious about. Uh, like like most things, I mean, don't go in with you know like one foot in, one foot out. Like if you're in, if you're in, go all in and right. give it your best shot. Try it out, and then like Tanya, like you're saying, yeah. you know, maybe it's not for you, but you gotta you gotta give it a go. You do. Um, how many weeks? Just in closing, how many weeks would you say somebody would need to like? To really like to f- to go through it and know, okay, this is for me or isn't. I mean, like a full month. Do you think of it? I would even say more than that. Okay. I would I would be like, if you really want to do this, give yourself three months, six months. Okay. Like, think more long term. Long term. Yeah. And once you get past that first month, like was it the first 21, 30 days is the hardest of anything. But yes. once you get past that and it gets easier, and yeah. then I think at that point, seeing some results, that's yeah. very motivating as yeah. well. But I would, I would really want to recommend, look, minimum three months, yeah. you know, and then at that reassess, is this something that you can continue to do? Is it something you want to do? Yeah. And then, then you know, like dig in and let's do it. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. That's great. Thank you so much. Uh, always a pleasure to have you. I look Thank forward you. to having you back, of course, to do this again. This is the Strong by Design podcast with yours truly, Coach Chris, sitting with Tanya Fines. And uh, thanks again. We'll see you again next time. Oh,